Good okay. afternoon. All right. Good afternoon and welcome to the eighth annual Wild Wisconsin Winter Web Conference. I am Jean Anderson with the South Central Library System and I am moderating the small and mighty track. Assisting me this afternoon is Bradley Ships with the Outagamie Wapaka Library System and we're so glad to have you here. Our presenter for this session is Casey Garner, the CSTP advisor for SUNY Morrisville. Casey will be presenting displays on a dime. And uh, before I turn it over to Casey, there is also a handout in your control panel that uh, Casey will be referring to periodically throughout the webinar. And uh, Casey, so go ahead and whenever you're ready, go ahead and take it away. Great, thank you so much. I'm happy to be with you all, at least in tech spirit today, um, from snowy New York to snowy Wisconsin. So uh, thank you for joining me. Um, so I have a couple of boring slides up front, quote unquote boring, uh, to talk through, and then uh, we'll get to the more fun stuff in uh, my presentation. So when I was looking at putting this present presentation together for the ARSEL conference in Vermont last fall, um, I decided I needed to talk a little bit up front about why I thought displays were an important topic, um, why it was worthwhile to do a whole presentation and on this at a conference, and um, it's not the first thing you think of when you think of libraries, and it's not um, completely crucial to, you know, checking out books or providing programming. So why I think displays are, are important is they add a lot of visual interest to your library. So when uh, people come into your library, uh, there's always something changing. There's always something new. Uh, I was talking to my mom about this presentation, and she's a very avid library goer. She goes. Um, at least every other week and she's one of those people that that reads you know three to five novels a week and she said when she goes to her library she walks straight to the new fiction section and she does the same thing every time loops around the new fiction picks up what she wants and really doesn't go ever go anywhere else in the library she has her set routine and every time she goes it looks the same and i thought how sad is that she's she's missing out on uh, a whole bunch of the library collection and potential books that she might enjoy um, so when we do displays, we add visual interest to our library, we showcase the resources and the, the items that we have in our collection that uh, might be interesting or helpful to people. We can dovetail with programming and events that we're doing uh, to bring interest to them. We can avoid stagnation, avoid that, that feeling that when regular library uh, patrons come in, it's the same as it was the time before and the time before that and the time before that. Um, displays can be really good to, to create community and to create discussions and dialogue among people. As they see displays of things that you're trying to educate them on, they can talk about them in the library. They can have a discussion with you as a staff member about why you think those things are important or why they're there. Um, they can dovetail with passive activities that you might be doing in your library to increase uh, engagement. And uh, you can use it to help your circulation. If you have items that you know that are in um, danger of being culled from your collection, being weeded, putting those items front and center on display can, can potentially increase their circulation. And it's just a fun way to uh, be creative in your library. I'm not a knitter or a crocheter. Um, some of you listed some fun arts and crafts activities um, before we got started here. I don't do those things, I do library displays. <laughs> Uh, so that's a way for me to be fun, to be fun and creative and, and have um, time to demonstrate that. So a little bit about my library. Uh, if you looked at my bio, you um, learned a little bit about me. I actually no longer work for my library. I got a new job in December um, working with college students and advising them. But uh, I turned around and joined my library board because I just can't quit and offered to continue to do displays for the library on a volunteer basis because it is something that I really enjoy and is a service I was providing to my library and to my community. So our library serves a, a very small town in New York. Uh, not all of New York is New York City. Um, a population of about 900 people. We're part of a large mid-York system. Um, but everything that you see today is items that we have in-house. I try to really keep my displays focused on things that we have in-house, resources that we have available, even in our small town. Um, we do have an interlibrary loan um, pro process that works very well within system, uh, but again, the displays that you'll see today are, are in-house displays. We have four part-time staff, including the director, who is also part-time, about 16,000 items in our collection. Um, 
And so I want you to take a little bit of a look at the picture here. This is a picture from the front door of our library. It's about 4,000 square feet, which is not huge um, for municipal library space. Over here on the right-hand side, uh, just off screen, we have our children's section. This is most of the adult fiction stacks back here would be YA. The new stuff goes right here, public computers across the middle. And out of frame to the left, we have a, a decent sized meeting room and a small J room. So my main display space in my library is uh, this oddly shaped table right here. It's a hexagon table. And I do share it with my, the public printer. So when you're talking about a small library with small square footage, um, sometimes you have to be creative about how you apply your space and how you use it. So um, you'll see a couple of places in the library throughout this, um, this presentation where I have expanded and I have taken over more space that wasn't originally mine, or I temporarily repurposed space to be able to do more displays rather than just what's on this table right here. Um, I also tend to switch out displays about every two weeks for on the table. Some of my other display spaces may run longer. Um, my DVD displays tend to run a month. Others might be shorter if it's a mini collection tied to um, a particular event or a particular calendar date. So I'll kind of talk you through that. But as you're um, as you're listening to me today, think about the spaces you have in your library. If you don't currently have a space for displays, where could you put one? What could you repurpose? What could you shift or move? Or if you have one and would like to have more, um, can you think about shelving or end caps or popping up another small table or an end table or a coffee table? Something that may work um, to expand your display space and improve that, um, that visual dynamics in your library. Also consider your budget. When my um, director asked me to take this on as a staff member, her first suggestion was, um, well, I guess just put up, I don't know, books that are red, books that have red covers. And I said, okay, that's, that's a good idea, but I'm gonna run out of colors really quickly if that's gonna be my, my criteria. Um, and so she didn't give me a lot of ideas or direction on that. So hence, hence this, uh, this presentation I've come up with, but she also didn't give me a budget. So I knew that I was going to have to come up with things that were very inexpensive or free and already available to me, uh, which brings me to my next, and here we start the fun slides. Um, so if you guys are on Instagram, this is one of my favorite people to follow on Instagram, at Tommy Lank. And um, he is does some fashion blogging. He was also in Buffy, if you're a Buffy fan. Um, but what he does is uh, he dresses up as various celebrities in their paparazzi photos using items he sources free from his house. Free from his house. That's, and he says, free from my house. It's his little hashtag. That's how I say it in my brain. Um, so that's what I'm going to say during this presentation here. Um, so you can see here he's dressed up like uh, the, the, the singer, Celine Dion. He's got this piece of faux fur around him a pillow from his front porch, free from my house. Um, and here he's dressed up like uh, the actress from Game of Thrones. He's used a tablecloth and some shelf line or some duct tape to try to recreate her, her fashion here. And yes, it's funny, yes, it's silly, but yes, he's also really creative in using the resources that he can source from his house, free from his house, or inexpensively from the dollar store to create an impact and try to replicate these photos. So Tommy Lang became my icon in, in moving forward with these displays, trying to decide what I could do for free, for cheap, to really have a big visual impact. Go follow Tommy Lang if you're on Instagram. So my first suggestion would be doing displays using your calendar. Um, right now, even as a volunteer to do displays, I have about 80 ideas that are in um, a document that I keep, um, just updating constantly, uh, things that I know will work for displays in my library. And what that means is I've had an idea, I've documented it, and then I've done the search within the library software to know that I have enough items to create a display out of it. Now, given my space and um, our library size, my, I shoot for between 14 and 17 items per display table. So my main dis display table here, that gives me some to put underneath or behind so that as those items check out, I do have uh, my staff members, my colleagues can just flip up new items. They're not scrambling to fill holes in the display. It makes their jobs a little bit easier. Um, everything on my 
tables um, are for checkout. Uh, if you have some items that you don't check out, you would want to clearly label those. And I do average between two and five checkouts um, for each table. And those would be items that wouldn't necessarily check out otherwise. Um, so paying attention to holidays, obviously that's an easy one, easy pickings there to plan out the holidays throughout the year to celebrate. And you just wanna make sure that you're doing that with a thought toward everyone in the community being inclusive um, and being, um, you know, paying attention to groups that don't necessarily celebrate all the major holidays, just doing it in a thoughtful and inclusive way. Um, so for each one of these pictures, I've also shown how much I spent on those items. That is for resources that I didn't have it free from my house or free from my library. So in this case, we had um, one for the 4th of July. Obviously, I spent a little bit of money on flags and the bandanas. I also try, if I do have to purchase items, make sure I, there are items that they can then be reused in another display, in another bulletin board for one of our programs. I really, really try to stay away from single use items. It's not good for the environment and it's not good for our budgets. Um, another one, easy one to celebrate is Mother's Day. There are lots of books talking about motherhood or mothers, et cetera. So you want to um, really dig into your calendar and look for those special months or weeks. At the Arsenal Conference, um, one of our presenters, our speakers, was Sandra Boynton, uh, the children's book author and illustrator. And she's come, she was in the process of coming up with a calendar that included all those fun little special days. And the one that she talked about was National Ninja Day. And I thought, well, I probably couldn't do a whole big display on National Ninja Day but I probably could come up with a mini display with three to five ninja related items that I could pop up somewhere for a week in my library to celebrate National Ninja Day. So that could be things like talk like a pirate day or ice cream day, any of those fun calendar things that, you know, we don't celebrate as big holidays, but are out there. Um, another thing to celebrate or to look at might be local events. What's going on in your community that you can dovetail with and really bring attention to. Uh, looking at unique interpretations of the calendar. So last um, spring, our library does a big Easter egg hunt. It's one of the big community events in our small town. And we didn't have enough Easter books in my library. I think there were maybe two or three that were particularly Easter themed. But what we did have was chicken books. And so I did uh, a chicken uh, chiclet table at that point. Um, the purchases for this were the tablecloth and the little stand here from the dollar store. The eggs and bucket came free from my house. And the children, every kid that came in that week played with the eggs, moved them around, took them out of the bucket, put them back in. So it was a unique way, unique way to uh, give a nod to Easter, to, to um, remind people that we were having our Easter egg hunt. We wanted community members to come to our event, but it was materials that I had on hand in our library that actually fit. And it also works because in the springtime, a lot of people in our rural area are thinking about acquiring chickens or hatching chickens uh, to have on their property. And it was a reminder that we had those resources there. Here's okay, so one that I did for Sam. Yes. Oh, sorry, kind of a sneak in, uh, in there. A uh, question came in, yeah. do you combine adult and children displays or do you do them separate? So I, most of my main display tables, I try to choose from, um, from each section. So I'll have at least one J book, at least one E book, uh, try to get a YA book or a large type book in there, an audio book or a movie. Not every um, display is going to lend itself to that. I have done displays that are all children's books, and I'll talk about them coming up a little bit. Uh, but I do try to choose something for everyone on there. So as you know, a whole family walks through the door, there might be something for everyone on the table. It's a great question. Excellent, thank it's you. It's entirely up to you, depending on your space and your collection and how you want to use it. Um, up here, I wanted to give a nod to St. Patrick's Day. We did not have any St. Patrick's Day books in my entire library, but I did uh, pinch proof your reading list and it was all just books that were green. Really easy to walk through your children's section and pull green covered books. Um, but then tie it to your calendar. Those go up for a week or a week or two. They're easy to replace as they check out. Um, this one down here was a movie collection. Oh, excuse me, I flipped slides here. A movie collection of um, during National Women's Month. So it was March and it said celebrate National Women's History Month with girl power. And so it was all movies that had strong female leads. Again, a way to showcase our collection in a unique interpretation of National Women's History Month 
these weren't all nonfiction or historical films, but some of them were, and a way to celebrate um, women in that way. This one was free from my house um, and really free because this umbrella, this weird umbrella actually came with my house when we bought it, it was left behind. Um, so this was April showers and just um, looking at rain or rain or rainy books, uh, showers, rainbows. And this one got a lot of attention. I fortunately only had one patron ask me if it was bad luck to have that umbrella open in the library. So um, being specific about your calendar and your themes. So it's really easy, obvious to do a, um, a Halloween display, but once you do one Halloween display, then you need to do something else the next year. So uh, if you break it out and you're specific with doing a witch display, a ghost display, a Frankenstein display, a zombie display, a uh, Dracula display, a pumpkin display. Now you've got a half a dozen ideas that will work for that month of October if your community celebrates Halloween. Um, so this is a witch display I did. Um, not just th thinking beyond harvest and fall to apples. Of course, New York State is famous for apples. These apples were ones that I made from leftovers uh, from our book sale. It was like, you know, John Grisham books that didn't sell in our book sale that I then cut out and turned into apples, three-dimensional apples. Um, looking beyond just Christmas to winter. We're all enduring winter right now. And so this was a way for me to celebrate that time of year in a way that was more inclusive um, for our community and people who don't necessarily necessarily celebrate Christmas. This was one of my very favorite displays that I've done and one that was best received by our community. It's Baking Spirits Bright. It was also a December display, um, a nod to the fact that it's a time of year that a lot of people are spending time in the kitchen and baking goodies for other folks. Some of the books were more holiday baking themed, others were not. And this was free from my house because this is literally items from my baking cupboard in my kitchen. Um, and we actually had several patrons wanting to um, take this this goodie basket, this goodie uh, bowl home um, or wanting to bid on it as far as like doing a raffle. So that might be an idea. You put together a raffle basket, do a baking um, display and have people buy tickets. It's a way to, to make it thematic, make it tied to the calendar and also maybe make a little bit of money for your library. Uh, building on events, celebration, and awareness. So this would be this was a Black History Month table I did. It was all um, African American nonfiction uh, sources, and uh, this was this was an Earth Day display. We actually did a community read with the Barbara King Solver book in conjunction with other libraries in our area and our local environmental education um, center. So we everybody got together and it didn't matter if you were going to this library or that library or if you were a regular at the environmental center uh, where there's trails and everything. Um, you got to see that we were communicating with each other. We were celebrating Earth Day and we had this out there to be involved in. Um, because we are about an hour away from a comic book store, we are very rural. Our library does participate in free comic book day in conjunction with one of those stores. And so we do it a week after them. We were fortunate enough that one of our board members um, was a writer for not for Marvel Comics, and this new um, compendium of Black Comic or uh, Black Panther Comics, excuse me, came out, has his name on the front, and he donated a copy to our library. So we were able to highlight him as a, as a local author tied in with our event of free comic book day giveaway and also be able to highlight the extensive collection of comics uh, superhero graphic novels that we have in our little library uh, we've kind of become known as a destination for graphic novels and common comics thanks to uh, the efforts of one of my more former co-workers so the cost on this was a roll of christmas wrapping paper um, that is justice league themed and these heavy duty chipboard um, signs here that again can be reused in a variety of ways. Casey? A few more calendar. Yes, please. Yes, and, um, before you switch off the signs, since you just mentioned signs, the question is, what do you use to create your signs? Publisher or something like that? Yep, I just use Publisher. Um, some of them are free downloads and I'll, at the very end, I'll have a list of resources um, that I've found helpful for free downloads. For example, the Black History Month ones are freebies. Um, the Hulk read was a freebie. The Earth Day one I designed based on some free clip art and some other stuff. Uh, but yes, mainly using Publisher because that's what was available on the library computer. 
So if you have a subscription to Canva or any of the other resources, you're lucky enough to have the Adobe Suite, um, any of those will work. Um, so I, I get to that a little bit later, but thank you for that question. Okay, thank you. You might want to take a few notes here if you want to, um, or if you have printed out the handout, you can fill in some of the calendar inspirations if you like these ideas or any of the ones I just talked about. If you do a heritage days in your um, town, you can dig into your local history collection and there might be some resources that people aren't familiar with. There might be some things um, in this case that don't check out if it's part of your reference collection that doesn't check out. You might even have some white glove items that you would be willing to put on display and let people know that they don't touch. Um, if autumn leaf through a good book, winter blues, great time of year for this one. It's an easy way to start books with blue covers, beat the winter blues with a book. Um, sorry, Valentine's Hugs and Kisses. That's another holiday that in my library we didn't have enough books for. I think we had three Valentine's themed books, but there are lots and lots of books that um, are hug and kiss themed. So I'm going to do a completely um, children's book table next week um, that are just things that have hug or kiss or hugs and kisses in the title. We had a great um, time doing Die November in our um, library this year. I did hide four plastic dinosaurs throughout the library at different call numbers and letters, and then um, had handouts so people could go on a dinosaur dig in the library. And um, so it was it was piggybacking off that passive activity, the engagement with the staff as you know, we had small children who maybe didn't understand Dewey Decimal, we could take them around and show them how that worked. And then when everybody found, when they found the dinosaurs that were hidden in the library on the dinosaur dig, they got a prize, which was our leftover Halloween candy, which was great timing to get rid of that in November. Um, Shark Week's another great one. One I did just this last period was um, New Year's resolutions. And I put up a bunch of how-to books. So in 2020, you can learn how to whittle. You can learn how to knit a scarf. You can learn how to manage your money. You can learn how to polish up your resume. Any of those how-to things that you um, know would be a resource for people in your community. OK, so first we have use your calendar. Second, we have use your collection. And this is where you, as a librarian just working in your library, have an opportunity to really influence um, what is available in displays. And this is a good time to point out that because we are um, a small staff at my library, my previous library, all of this work that you see with displays was done while I was also working the desk. We don't um, double up hours at my library. I was always there alone. I worked nights and weekends mainly. And so in between helping patrons check out and doing tech consults and all the other things that need to happen in a library, I was doing displays. So it's really something that you can do that doesn't take up a lot more staff time or resources if you're concerned about that. And I know lots of small libraries are. So looking and really paying attention as you're reshelving books, as you're reading your shelves to make sure that they're in order, as you're um, looking at your new acquisitions in your collection, what circulates, what doesn't, and special items that you have in your collection and thinking, how can I showcase these or how can I um, make a display out of these? So just in the course of reshelving and reading shelves, I realized pretty quick, wow, I'm shelving a lot of B-related things. Um, that's unusual. And so running a quick, a couple of quick searches and finding that, yeah, I had enough items that were bee related, the secret life of bees, the death of bees, little bee, honey, um, that I can make a bee table out of it. Cost for this one, of course, was the crepe paper from the dollar store. Um, I didn't use the whole roll, so there were leftovers there. Um, looking at what's going to be um, popular in your community. What do people need in your community? So in the spring, again, we live pretty rural. Lots of people put in gardens. And I don't know that a lot of people would think to go to the library first to look up a square foot gardening book or how to plant roses or how to put it in an herb garden. And those are all things that people are looking for. And if we can provide that to them by putting it up front and center at the time of year that they need it, that's money that they didn't spend at Amazon. That's money that they didn't spend um, driving to the nearest Barnes and Noble. And that's um, you know more investment in our community and our library because we're meeting the needs of our community. So this is a how, is it, how does your garden grow? Um, the cost for this one was the seeds, which I then took home. <laughs> some of these, some of these expenses are out of pocket. Some of them are library expenses. That's something you'll need to work out with your director as far as the budget and how those things are paid for. A lot of these things I did pay out of pocket, but then I took them home because they were mine. Um, 
I, you know, gave the gloves and the spade to my daughter and just let her dig in the garden and plant the seeds after work, which I was money I would have spent in the spring anyway. Um, we have in my library, uh, older, particularly men who are really into Westerns. They wait and wait for those new William Johnstown books to come and then they circulate like crazy. And so um, really leaning into that, knowing my patrons and knowing what they like and what they were interested in, and maybe trying to get them to move to a couple of different authors. So they were still reading in between those Johnstone books um, that they would, could recognize there were a lot of, there are some up, uh, great female authors who are writing interesting um, Westerns, um, realizing that maybe they enjoy Westerns. So they wanted to share a cowboy themed children's book with their grandchild or watch cowboy themed movies. So again, what circulates in your library, what works for your patrons? Um, the $4 here was spent on um, flowers that can then be reused in other displays or at other events. And it's kind of hard to see, but you'll see that instead of a vase, I've used my own cowboy boots. I used to live in South Dakota in Idaho, so I do own cowboy boots. Uh, they didn't smell, fortunately, <laughs> um, but I've used them to try to, to deck out the table. Um, this next one, again, looking at resources the library has that people might be needing. This was um, a happy camper guide and um, think, showcasing the idea that we have a guide to the Finger Lakes, we have a trail guide to the Adirondacks, um, we have birding guides, we have backpacking guides, things that I wouldn't necessarily think to go to the library for if I were planning a week in the Adirondacks, but why would I need to own that item if I were just planning a week vacation? I could borrow that item from the library and save that money. Uh, this was literally free from my hall, well, free from my yard, um, because I cut these fir tree branches out of my yard. Um, here's another one, knowing, knowing my patrons and knowing the community. We um, live an hour almost from a first run theater. A lot of people can't afford the time and money to go to the theater. So if you are a cinemaphile in my town, you go to the library to get um, those movies to view on DVD. So at Oscar time last year, I put up a collection of best picture nominees so that people who are interested in films and paying attention could be like, oh yeah, I didn't have a chance to see Gravity when it, when it was up for best picture two years ago. I have a chance to see that now as part of our collection and part of those resources that we can provide to our community. Uh, using the technology is really important when you're filling out your table, searching by multiple items, um, multiple keywords, and multiple subjects. Most library software is going to give you different results when you search even the same word by title or by subject. If you add a plural, searching um, flower versus flowers is going to give you different results and using synonyms. So for this Hello Sun Sunshine table, um, searching the word sun, sunshine, sunny, solar, that's what gave me enough things to do this table. If I had just stopped at sun, I wouldn't have had enough items. Same here, I didn't have enough items under flower, but if you add floral and then start doing types of flowers, um, orchids, roses, you got a James Patterson book on a flower table, something for everyone, um, mums, uh, marigolds, daisy, then it gave me enough items to do this uh, Mayflowers display. So using your collection ideas that will work in a lot of library collections, again, you might want to take a few notes here, spy stuff, all libraries have stuff on spies. Um, there's been some great gra graphic adaptations that have come out. I did do a table of all graphic adaptations. I'm thinking an adaptation of The Giver, um, Anne Frank's Diary, uh, The Handmaid's Tale. Those have all come out and are beautiful graphic adaptations in the last few years. Big Machines in Construction, if you have a Tonka truck at home, that's an easy one. Farming and Tractors, lots of resources there. Religion, most libraries have a pretty decent sized religion collection, both fiction and nonfiction. Um, doctors and nurses. I know in our library system, you know, those season one and two of Grey's Anatomy still circulate really strong. So lean into that. Lean into those um, those doctor and nurse stories that you have in nonfiction, fiction, TV, or movies. Um, Star Wars and Star Trek, those fandoms obviously are still really important to a lot of people, still really popular. We still have new items coming out. Dragons is a huge one. There's been a ton of dragon themed items coming out lately. Um, what do you have in your library that you could do a display around? Uh, this is an elephant. It's actually bigger than it looks in the picture. Kids sit on it and write on it in our kids section. So when I do my elephant display, that's what will be going on the table. 
Um, in this picture, we got a couple of new puppets and included in that was this really awesome narwhal puppet. And so I showcased that item that was for checkout that's new to our collection um, with a polar ice Arctic themed display. Advocating um, for libraries and literacy. So a few ideas that um, fall within this category would be looking at banned book week, award-winning books, um, trying to get people to sign up for library cards, looking at um, how people learn to read or literacy rates. Your summer reading program, that's a huge one. Um, you know, last summer it was all space all the time. And so I'll kind of show you how I um, highlighted that a little bit. Um, your staff favorites, local authors, like I mentioned, we had the, the comic book author. Um, a single author spotlight, so you might, might want to spotlight somebody like Roald Dahl or Dr. Seuss or um, Mary Pope Osborne, some of those more prolific writers where you have several items from a single author um, or new genres. So uh, manga over here, I did a whole manga table, um, no cost. This was just tissue paper that we had a pack of tissue paper at the library that I use. Manga is not my genre. I don't read it. It's not my thing. That's perfectly okay. Lots of people do read it and lots of people love it. So um, by putting this table up, I got a few kids interested in manga who hadn't read it before and several adults who said, oh yeah, I didn't realize that new one was out and they picked it back up. This was one of my highest circulating tables last year, which kind of surprised me, but I love. Um, band book, this would be the most expensive table that's in this whole display. And that's because I bought these by clocks from the dollar store and I literally locked books up on the table. This was the table that generated probably the most discussion with staff um, because you have things like Hop on Pop and Captain Underpants on this table. And then people look at it and go, wait, those are on band book lists, band and challenge book lists? Why? What, what's the problem with Hop on Pop? And you can have a discussion then with your patrons about why those items are there and why they've been banned and challenged. So this, for example, just came from, uh, it was part of the media download that you could get online um, and they have a new theme each year. And so that was easy peasy for the poster. You just download it because somebody has already done that work for you. So looking at a little closer at programming, um, again, we had all space all the time. I showed you my Hello Sunshine display. So last summer, instead of just doing a single space display, I did a sun one, I did a star one, I did um, aliens and I did um, planets, you know, so it, I broke that out. So we had space themed things going on in the library, we had space, um, books that we were giving away as part of our SRP. We had space tables that were going on all summer, but they were dynamic and they were changing. Um, so this was a read for the stars. This also doubled as my 4th of July table last year. So it was star themed. We have fault in our stars, twinkle, twinkle, little star, but it still fit within the parameters and the idea of our summer reading program. This is what I did put for um, in our glass case for our after school program. And this was all just items um, that are from our storage area and after school program. And this year, I think partially uh, because of the display, we maxed out enrollment in our after school program at 18. So that's kids ages nine to 12. Um, they come in three days a week. It's free for homework, help, help and snacks. And it's the highest enrollment we've ever had. We actually had to cap it this year. Um, so you can see that, that putting those things out there engages people and lets them know what your library is offering. A few more ideas to advocate. Um, we do a, an adult summer reading program, which um, includes a bingo card, and it's not just books, but it could be things like listen to a podcast or attend a community event. And uh, two years ago, our library was turning 100. So one of the bingo card checkoffs was to read a book that was more than 100 years old. And just to give that to somebody, to, for them to walk in the library without a lot of literary knowledge can be kind of overwhelming for a potential reader. So I pulled a bunch of books that were more than 100 years old and put them on a display so that somebody who was wanting to participate in that bingo program and fill out their card didn't have to wander up and down the stacks looking for old books. They were all just right there for them. Uh, this one was free from my house, uh, a couple of bookends. And I like this one because it's a little bit different shaped. Um, many of you are probably familiar with the Great American Read program that was done. Again, this is a media package that was done for you. It's meant to be downloaded and printed and shared in your community. So this was the books that, um, oops, sorry. 
that we had in our library that were on that Great American Reads list. And I printed out a copy of the checklist for people to take home so they could mark off what they had already read or what they wanted to read. Um, again, people who don't understand the Dewey Decimal System, I think that sometimes we work the library, library and those kinds of things become second nature to us. Um, but putting that out there for young and old people who don't quite understand um, what the different categories are, how the numbers work. Uh, this was free. This was a, a library advocacy um, download I found on Pinterest, and the only cost was printing and putting it together. So my fourth thing would be to get inspired. As you live your life outside of the library, be looking for ways that you can incorporate ideas into library displays. What items are free from your house or free at your library or items that you can borrow from other people that you could make a display out of? What are some inexpensive items you could acquire at a dollar store or a thrift store or an antique shop to make sure that those, di those displays are dynamic and fun and bringing that element of change to your library? Um, little story here. This one is kind of an expensive table because I spent $4 on this frog birdhouse. My eight-year-old, I call her the frog whisperer the toad whisperer, if you sent her outside in the summer, she will come back with a toad or a lizard or something um, to, to have. And so she had asked me for this birdhouse, wanted to have it at home. And I said, oh, $4, that's a little bit more than I want to spend. I said, I'll get it for you, but you need to let me use it at the library first. So I used it to put together this hoppy reading um, table, all frog themed everything from nonfiction about amphibians to the Muppet movie and, and Kermit the Frog. And then now the, the frog birdhouse is living on my porch at home. This one was inspired by going to the dollar store in the summer and seeing that they have flip-flops and sun hats. And I was like, well, I can put together a beach themed book, uh, Beach Reads, that's, you know, an, uh, an, an obvious theme in the summer. The beach the beach towel was free from my house and I bought the sand toys that my kids then played with the rest of that summer. So um, easy and inexpensive stuff. Again, another inspiration from the dollar store are the emoji books. And so I, I picked four different emojis and laminated them, put them on popsicle sticks so they could be reused. And so I have books that are happy, books that are funny or um, media, though it's a movie in that case, that's funny. Um, books that are sad and um, items that are scary. So easy way to lean into that. It's eye catching. It's bright. Everybody can knows the shorthand of all of those things. And so if you're looking for a book that's scary, it's easy one to, to find one there. Uh, here's another example of free from my house. Um, well, yes, we are strange at my house. We do have a collection of presidential plush dolls. Um, that I use for a President's Day collection. So again, one of those lesser thought about holidays that you can then use. Um, and I have some photographs, historical photographs here of different presidents reading. Now, I don't expect that you also have a collection of presidential plush dolls at your house. That would be weird. Um, I fully admit that I'm weird, but you have something interesting at your house. You have something that's unique, that's part of your home and part of something that's special to you. That would work for a display. So be thinking about what that item is or those items are. Um, a few ideas. Right before the Arsenal um, conference, I went around my house with the camera and I said, what's free from my house? Um, my mom had just gone to it on a trip to China. So uh, she had brought my girls back these pandas. It would be easy to do a Chinese themed display or a panda display. Um, we could do an Italy themed display, Italian cooking with a red checkered tablecloth. Um, in all books that are in Italy. I actually used these cool tin lunch boxes in a display on, um, it was on the 75th anniversary of D-Day last summer. So celebrating that and World War II themed books. Monkeys, uh, lots of libraries have an American Girl collections. Uh, we even have an American Girl doll that checks out. I know lots of libraries have that. Uh, so we have an Addy doll that checks out. This is my Molly doll from back in the day. Be really easy to put together a table. Um, of the American Girl resources that you have that are still circulating and still going strong. There's movies, there's the new books, there's the classic books, there's the dolls and all their accessories. Um, so lots of fun stuff there that would appeal to folks. Cheap from the dollar store. Uh, again, I went around the dollar store and, and just took pictures of things that uh, I had um, that display to do, I could use. I didn't use this on my frog display, but if I had had it at the time, I sure would have made a little banner out of it. 
Uh, Lego tablecloth, lots of libraries have Lego resources and that dovetails nicely if you're having a Lego play day or an after school Lego program uh, to, to work on that. Mardi Gras, you would think that that would be a little bit obscure, but if you search, you'll probably find enough alligator and New Orleans Southern cooking and Cajun themed things so that will work. Sports, of course, Thanksgiving, you would want to search not just Thanksgiving, but thanks, thank you, gratitude, turkey, that would probably work. Um, you could do a pet table and maybe coordinate with your local shelter on uh, adopting a pet or um, piggybacking off a local adopt a pet day so that when people get those pets, they know that they can come to the library with resources on feeding your fish or training your cat. At my house, we, uh, my daughter got a betta fish for her birthday right after Christmas. And so we have the, you know, everything about bettas um, book checked out at my house, which Again, that's money that they're not spending um, at, on Amazon and resources that your community can then use. Um, along with dragons, mermaids are huge right now. Unicorns are huge right now. So thinking about how you could use this fun little mermaid tail in a display, hanging off the edge of a table or something. So a few ideas to get started, and then I'm gonna wrap it up and um, go over to our worksheet, and you're gonna have a chance to write down a few ideas and hopefully share them back with us all through the chat. Um, again, think about space that you have in your library. If you're currently doing displays or you want to do more, um, you, what space do you have? What can you make available? What ledges, shelves, tops of bookcases? Um, what can you shuffle as far as your collection to make that space available? And do you need to talk to your board or your director about acquiring a small table or something uh, that's sturdy enough to support displays? Table coverings, be creative here. Fabric works great. It, lots of people have huge fabric stores that'll let you, um, you know, in their house collection quilters or whatever, or you can go to the fabric store or um, uh, anywhere. Plastic co table coverings, I try to stay away from plastic because they're not too durable. If I do end up getting like a dollar store tablecloth, I try to use it a couple of times um, and then use it for a bulletin board backer so that I'm, I'm getting multiple uses out of it. Fabric napkins. Um, sheets I have used before. I've even used shower curtains. Um, I dare you to go back through those pictures and figure out which one was a shower curtain. Wrapping paper, I showed you that one, tissue paper. All good ways to cover those surfaces and again bring some um, creativity, some bright colors, and really draw attention to those areas. Book display stands, that's an important one. That was built into my library when I started doing displays, so I didn't have to purchase them. Um, if you're starting from scratch, those are available at Dollar Tree. You might want to invest in some higher quality ones. That's a discussion with your board or your director. Vases and pots, a lot of those things you probably have at home or they can be acquired at a thrift shop. Uh, rocks, moss, and floral foam is all stuff I tend to get from the dollar store. Cardstock, um, a tabletop easel. A lot of my displays that you saw do use a tabletop easel. Um, I have two of them. They were um, purchased after Memorial Day from the uh, you know dollar store. They're the ones that that are meant to go in a cemetery and have a wreath of flowers hung on them. So they're extremely durable. They're metal. They're lightweight and they were very inexpensive. I think they were $3 a piece. So if your library doesn't have those, you might have to wait till that time of year, but you can also do a search for tabletop easel. So you have a way to hang some visual items higher or hang a poster or something just to give you some visual interest in some of that height on the table that makes displays look a little bit better. Obvious, um, Office things, clips, tape, string, et cetera, some risers. I used books that didn't sell in our book sale, hardcover books that were thick, and I've covered with them, them with paper. Um, boxes or wood blocks would be great. Um, visual resources. So I do tend to stick with um, things that are pre-made. Alexandria Library and ALA are a great source of those. Uh, digital scrapbooking files. There are a lot of really talented designers out there who put out free digital scrapbooking files for non-commercial use. Um, free clip art and graphics, uh, freepick.com is a great one that you can use those for, um, for free as long as you do an attribution on them. So if I do have to find some sort of graphic or clip art, I make sure that I add a source um, so I'm not running afoul of, of copyright stuff. Oh, there's a lot of great ideas on Pinterest, of course, and elementary teacher resources that are meant to be printed and used um, by educational settings. A few more ideas that I put together. So this is bonus stuff that the folks at the conference didn't see. Here is my um, Dracula table. And um, the funny story about this, the little Dracula guy, you could see him through the window. So as my director would drive by at night, 
and look and see this bank of, of lights that we keep on. A couple of times she looked in and said, who is that in the light? Who's that small child in the library? And it wasn't anybody. It, it was um, it was Dracula there. Um, leaf through a good book. I bought these felt leaves that I then hung from the grid ceiling with clips and string. And immediately these these were two dollars for two different sets of them, so a dollar each, and they were immediately reused in a November um, bulletin board. So they're durable; they they're going to last forever. They're thick felt. Free from my house again. Um, this is a Christmas a very Christmas display I did. Um, some of these things are Christmas themed, but others of them are just bear themed. So if you have families coming in who um, aren't people who celebrate Christmas, there's still something on this table for them um that's bear themed and then this lego display table this was another extremely popular table as far as checkouts um the cost was this pennant banner and uh we i just put little collections of legos out here there's lego mini figs that are hung on stuff throughout there and the kids came in and they played and interacted with the display so that is the end of my talking i'm going to go ahead and throw the handout up here and talk through it a little bit and um, just give you a, a chance if you downloaded it or if you um, printed it, taking some notes, whatever. Um, on this, end, this side here, if I gave you this item today, what display would you make for, from your collection? So the first item here is a typewriter. The second item is a quilt. The third item is this flag. It says celebrate. It's 12 by 18 inches. And the fourth item would be um, a couple of these skeletons. So go ahead, feel free to either write down your ideas or if you want to chat them in and um, we can read them for everybody, that would be great. Um, what, what display would you do with the, this old typewriter here? Free from my house. <laughs> Thank you, Casey. Uh, while everybody's um, working on that part, I'll just uh, do a couple of the comments that came in. Um, yeah. One one was from Lisa. She said, just remember that when you bring things from home, they could be lost, stolen, or damaged. And after a while, yeah. it may be expected that you'll do that unless money may be budgeted for displays. So to keep that in mind. Great. I haven't had any problems with stuff from my house, but I'm also not bringing precious antiques in. So that's something definitely to consider. Thank you. Yes. Um, Candy says, after we use a plastic tablecloth in a few displays, we use it as a drop cloth uh, or a table cover for messy craft projects. <laughs> Perfect idea. Getting that multiple use out of it helps your budget yes. and the environment. Um, so some comments for the typewriter. Uh, Shelly says, click, clack, move for typewriter would be one. Love it. Uh, Allie, Allie says, the, the typewriter would be good to highlight classics that don't circ often. I have a typewriter that I'll be bringing in now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Great. Uh, Christina says, oh, whoops, sorry. Carla says, looking for a new job or career change. Um, huh? It would nice. be a good classic. That's uh, a new one. For me i've heard the others before that was a brand new one for me this is a, the fourth time i've done this presentation so well done there awesome carla good job uh christina says the typewriter display classic authors featuring their books in print but also audio and made into film yeah nice so one idea i had for this one i thought of hemingway books um because i always think of hemingway as uh writing on a typewriter like this uh, the other one would be memoirs. So learning how to write your own story and write a memoir and featuring authors that have written their own memoirs. Yes, and a couple more comments came in about the writing process. Uh, first time writers, authors, um, Sue Grafton display was one. Um, Great. Yeah. The All awesome on, ideas. Yeah, writing processes or language learning resources was another one. Very good. Moving on to the quilt, take a minute and think about what you might do there. Um, if I handed you a quilt. All right, we'll let everybody think about that one for a minute. Cozy reads. Love it. Sewing and crafts, Laura yep. Ingalls books. Excellent. You might have a quilt guild or a group in your town that quilts. You could feature one of their quilts and have information about how people join or how to sew, how to quilt. Um, they might even be willing to come in and do a program at your library and you could dovetail all those things. How the community is sewn together. Ooh, very good. Pieces of history, different historic events that change the way we think or live. Yeah, I love it. Uh, fiber art books. Yep. 
Quilts for Causes, famous quilts that aided organizations? That's very great. Good idea. Um, one that was suggested in a previous webinar was Underground Railroad. There's been um, oh. some great fiction come out in Underground Railroad themed stuff. Colson Whitehead's book, we had Tanisi Coates' book, um, you know, the the uh, movie that came out about Moses, the Harry Tubman movie. Um, those would all fit in with the theme of a quilt, too. Mm -hmm. We have Amish romance or pioneer romance and genealogy exactly. resources slash family heirlooms. Great. All great ideas. I know the Amish fiction is stuff that's really popular in my area. We have a large Amish population um, around here and that, that stuff circulates. The forgiving quilt, the loving quilt, the hope quilt, all of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, move. Moving on pretty quickly, we're running out of time here. I want to finish on time. The flag, what would you use the flag for? I'll wait just a second while everybody's frantically typing on their typewriters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, service men and women for sol a soldier display. President's Great, Day. President's Day, yeah, very good. I would use it for our 4th of July celebration. Ooh, I like firecracker reads, hot titles. Nice, oh, those are great ideas. Yeah, it does kind of look like fireworks on there. Mm -hmm. uh, might work for uh, New Year's one, two. Mm -hmm. We just had a display for lap quilts for veterans that were made by our crafting club. So that goes back to the um, yeah. quilt one, but also could be the celebrate and whatnot on there. Yeah, very good. Mm -hmm. My town doesn't do 4th of July fireworks. Um, we do our later in July for our um, town heritage days, the Earl De Earlville days, heritage days. So I could use one there for local history. And that would um, remind people that there are fireworks and events going on throughout the community that day. Um, another comment is anything, celebrate dogs or cats or cakes. Um, I like that one, celebrating cakes. Um, music yeah. about celebrating success, winning or victory. Uh, Perhaps the star a birthday birth theme table. Yes. How to make a cake for a birthday yeah. or decorating birthday cakes. Um, mm -hmm. you know, Molly's birthday, Addie's birthday books, etc. Yes. Um, perhaps the starburst could go with uh could perhaps pair with rainbows for LGBTQ Pride. I love it. That's a great one. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll move on now to the uh the skeletons. What ideas do you have there? <laughs> Skeletons in the closet books uh, with secret Ooh. or hidden, et cetera, in the title. Flowers in the attic for everyone. <laughs> yes. Anything health related. Yep, exactly. Medical books, health books. Um, a lot of libraries, small libraries in particular, find it hard to, to stay current on those things because um, medical and health books get outdated so quickly. But some libraries um, might want to post a list of online resources, the Mayo Clinic, for example, to help their patrons know where to navigate online to find information about those things. And some libraries even subscribe to um, those kinds of medical databases and search things. So it'd be a way to let them know um, about those resources. Um, skeletons work well for chiropractic programs. Looking forward to improving your health. Bone up on yeah. your uh, classics for a classic book display. I like that Great. one. Um, yep. Human anatomy books or drawing books. Ooh, drawing. That's a great one, too. Uh -huh. Murder How to draw or, human figures. Yeah. Murder or detective mysteries. Um, yeah, you have a bunch of um, Kathy Reich's Bones books that would work yeah. there, right? Yep. Cold case, horror book authors, uh, mm -hmm. books to tickle your funny bone. Ha! I love it. <laughs> you guys are so creative. You don't need me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, going back up to the other side of the uh, the handout here, what are some local events that after this you might consider, um, or programming that your library does that you might consider doing a display out of? Anything that anybody wants to share there? Yes, and feel free to share those in the questions panel and I will pass them along.
you mentioned um, circulation a couple of times. So do you uh, like change the status of your books to track the circulation of those while we're waiting for um, um, this to come in? Yeah, so actually when I do a display, I do check out the, the items um, to oh. the library so that okay. if we get um, a library request on them, they aren't disappearing out to other libraries in our system. They are checked out. Um, so I guess that kind of artificially inflates our um, checkout stats, but we can also break that out because we know that we're the user. Right. And then okay. essentially when it checks it out to another patron in our system, it, it double checks out. <laughs> okay. So I don't, it, that's really system dependent and kind of what your director wants you to do. My director told me to check the books out to my library. So then when we right. got a request to circulate them, they weren't available. Uh, right. But they do, they can circulate to patrons who come in and, and choose them to check them out. Got it. Okay, thank you. I was curious about that. Um, so yeah. a couple comments have come in. Um, citywide, citywide rummage a Rama. I like that. Ooh, I love it. Uh, Dino November. Uh huh. Uh, horse and buggy days in September. Fun. Yes. Great you ideas. Oh, um, Jill says I also have an old typewriter and a bony skeleton hand, so I will be putting them together for a Halloween-themed tale from the crypt display. <laughs> Ooh, I love it. Uh -huh. uh, Kelly says county like, fair. Great. County fair is a big one, especially in these rural areas. That's a that's a big deal for people. Um, we're going to skip calendar ideas. We're running out of time. What are some items that you know you have or some books in your collection that you um, want to highlight or things that you know will work based on the numbers in your collection? All right, while we're waiting for people to um, type those in, uh, Christina says, we did an off-site craft table at a community festival and we're located at the fire station. So they did a fireman fire trucks display to help promote us being there and for checkout showing how much we had on that topic. So That's awesome. Yeah, yeah again, um, looking at your community and the resources and the things that you have going on to really um, fix people's attention on those things. Yes, um, and then, uh, uh, Candy says political candidates. Um, Trixine mm -hmm. says I am planning on an underwear book display. Interesting. Ha, I love it. Captain <laughs> I love Underpants that. all the way. <laughs> yes, Captain Underpants and probably other ones too. Yeah. So keep those ideas coming. If you want to write in something that you have from your house that's cool and unique that you think you could use in a library display, go ahead and share that with us. Or, um, and then just kind of for your uses as you're planning and thinking, what's a new space in your library that you could um, appropriate for displays, even on a temporary basis? We have about two minutes left to, to throw out some of those ideas you want to chat in and, and want to share. And I'll take this minute while you're typing um, to thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. I think you have the slides available to you. If you want to reach out to me, um, my email address is right here. Feel free. I love to see pictures of what you're doing or new ideas you want to share. Um, and please fill out the feedback form. That helps me um, as I do a few more webinars. Um, really tailor this to what people need and what they um, need to hear, what they're expecting. So thank you. Thank you. Um, a couple, uh, one more, uh, I think I don't know if it's um, which collection it goes under, but it's the Library of America display. So that's another, oh, right. yes, collection that came in. So while we're and so while we're waiting for any other comments to come in, I will do the same thing. Um, thank you uh, so much, Casey, for this great session. It has a lot of ideas. Um, so thank you all, and I, I'm, I'm guessing that people will be going back and listening and taking more notes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, as I mentioned, this uh, recording and slides and Casey's handout will all be posted on the conference website, um, hopefully by tomorrow. Um, our closing session today is at 2.30 with Amy Rauman, and we hope that you can join us. So, thank you all for joining us today, and have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Casey. Thank you, everyone.